Speakers, publishers, consultants, coaches, and info marketers unite. The Speaking of Wealth Show is your roadmap to success and significance. Learn the latest tools, technologies, and tactics to get more bookings, sell more products, and attract more clients. If you're looking to increase your direct response sales, create a big-time personal brand, and become the go-to guru, the Speaking of Wealth Show is for you. Here is your host, Jason Hartman. Welcome to the Speaking of Wealth Show. This is your host, Jason Hartman, where we discuss profit strategies for speakers, publishers, authors, consultants, coaches, info marketers, and just go over a whole bunch of exciting things that you can use to increase your business, to make your business more successful and more and more passive and more and more automated and more and more scalable. So we will be back with a great interview. Be sure to visit us at speakingofwealth.com. You can take advantage of our blog, subscribe to the RSS feed, and many other resources for free at speakingofwealth.com. And we will be back with a great interview for you in less than 60 seconds. I've never really thought of Jason as subversive, but I just found out that's what Wall Street considers him to be. Really? Now, how is that possible at all? Simple. Wall Street believes that real estate investors are dangerous to their schemes because the dirty truth about income property is that it actually works in real life. I know. I mean, how many people do you know, not including insiders, who created wealth with stocks, bonds, and mutual funds? Those options are for people who only want to pretend they're getting ahead. Stocks and other non-direct traded assets are a losing game for most people. The typical scenario is you make a little, you lose a little, and spin your wheels for decades. That's because the corporate crooks running the stock and bond investing game will always see to it that they win. This means, unless you're one of them, you will not win. And unluckily for Wall Street, Jason has a unique ability to make the everyday person understand investing the way it should be. He shows them a world where anything less than a 26% annual return is disappointing. Yep, and that's why Jason offers a one-book set on creating wealth that comes with 20 digital download audios. He shows us how we can be excited about these scary times and exploit the incredible opportunities this present economy has afforded us. We can pick local markets untouched by the economic downturn, exploit packaged commodities investing, and achieve exceptional returns safely and securely. I like how he teaches you how to protect the equity in your home before it disappears and how to outsource your debt obligations to the government. And this set of advanced strategies for wealth creation is being offered for only $197. To get your Creating Wealth Encyclopedia Book 1, complete with over 20 hours of audio, go to jasonhartman.com forward slash store. If you want to be able to sit back and collect checks every month just like a banker, Jason's Creating Wealth Encyclopedia series is for you. It's my pleasure to welcome Craig Doeswalt to the show today. He is the rock star who teaches the rock star system for success, and we have a lot to cover with him. He's got a tremendous background, and if you want to be a rock star in your industry, whether it's being a speaker, an author, et cetera, et cetera, be a rock star at trade shows, whatever that is, Craig is the guy that can really give us some great information about that today. Craig, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. Well, thank you, Jason, for having me. Pleasure myself. So you've got a fascinating background really working with rock stars. I mean, real, legitimate, big name rock stars. That like we, real rock stars, we, yeah. We all <laughs> recognize, absolutely. Tell us about your background first, if you would. Okay, um... Basically, just out of college, I got a job at the Westbury Music Fair in Long Island, New York as a runner backstage, and I basically worked a Friday and Saturday night. On Friday night, I was working backstage. Saturday night, they came to do a second show. They liked the way I was working at the first show backstage. They said, you know what? We want to hook up with this guy, and they asked me to go on the road with them, and I toured with Air Supply for seven years. So just because I was doing, uh, you know, being a positive guy backstage, even though it was a very menial job... I uh, got a job with one of the top bands at the time 
touring with Air Supply as their personal band assistant for seven years. Well, you know what that goes to show you, Craig? That you do a small job well, and it leads to a big job. And it reminds me of the quote, and you're up in L.A., so, you know, you're around the Hollywood world. There are no small parts, only small actors. Oh, I love that you know that. I used to be an actor myself. That is absolutely true. And what I teach in my boot camps is uh, always do your best. You never know who's watching. And I teach that all the time because, you know, I easily could have went in there. It's a very menial job. I mean, all I did was get drinks for bands, pick them up at the airport, drive them to the hotel. I was the lowest on the totem pole. But I did it well. I always had a positive attitude. The guys, you know, you only get a minute to impress somebody or less than that. And they liked me the night before, came back the second night. And then the next day, they sent a limo to my house to pick me up. And uh, it took me to the airport, and uh, Learjet took me to Wallingford, Connecticut, and I toured with them for seven years simply because I had a good attitude and a very menial job. That had to be a fun life. Oh, my gosh. It was seven, and at the time, air supply was huge. I mean, they were, you know, the great thing was 95% of their audience was women. So for a 21-year-old guy just out of college, that was uh, pretty, pretty good. And then while I was with air supply, uh, one of the security guys for air supply talked about you know, being in the right place at the right time for this guy, he became the manager of Guns N' Roses. And there's a whole story there how that happened. But once again, he was a positive attitude guy, and he was a hard worker. So he became the manager of Guns N' Roses. And after touring with Air Supply, I took a couple of years off. And um, he calls me up one day, and he goes, you ready to go back on the road? And I'm like, what do I have to do? And he's like, you basically have to babysit Axl Rose. And I'm thinking to myself, now, wait a minute, this guy's in the news every single day for something that's not so good. But it was a lot of money, so I said, all right. And I toured with Guns N' Roses during the Use Your Illusion World Tour in the early 90s. I toured with them for four years. I was his uh, personal assistant first and became his personal manager and basically managed his whole life and kept him out of jail for four years. That was my job. <laughs> kept him out of jail. That's funny. <laughs> yeah. Well, Craig, this really does translate into the corporate world, doesn't it? I mean, absolutely. fascinating background. I, I think every kid at one point or another, especially boys, wanted to be a rock star at some time. No question. I did. But tell us about the transition, the leap from working in this the music industry to the corporate world world well it was it was it was quite interesting actually i i basically through guns and roses i decided to get normal again and you know everyone says why would you ever quit that gig and i'm like try touring with for four years living out of a suitcase living living out of a hotel you know i interviewed duff mckagan the bass player for guns and roses on my stage and he said during the height of their career he was the loneliest person in the world and 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 for people to hear that they don't get it, but I lived it, and it's very lonely on the road because you're meeting people just for one night, and then you're off to meet other people on another night. So there's never any you know, connections. There's no real friendship, so it gets very lonely. So I toured with them for a while with Guns N' Roses, and, and I just decided, you know, I just got to get normal again. Uh, I wanted to, you know, I was getting older. I wanted to get married and have kids. So I took my marketing background that I had graduating college, and I decided to get a job as a senior copywriter, and then I became a creative director for an ad agency, and then I op opened my own ad agency. And I said to myself, in this ad agency, I was able to use, you know, ad agencies do the more traditional marketing, you know, the print advertising catalogs way back then, and that kind of stuff. And my clients were like Baskin Robbins, Disney, ESPN, ba um, the Los Angeles Dodgers had some pretty big accounts. But what made me stand out from everybody else was these little outside-the-box marketing type techniques that I learned with Guns N' Roses, how they attracted 80,000 people to a concert, and how we can take those theories and then put them in everyday life and every, the corporate world. So now I've decided, all right, there's a little thing I can do here. I can teach traditional marketing to my audiences, and that's what I do now. I do these rock star marketing boot camps, and I treat, teach traditional marketing but I incorporate a lot of how to stand out from the competition, how to do things different than everybody else. And if, just like you said, in corporations, you know, a corporation is doing things like everybody else is doing, then they're not going to stand out from their competition. So it was a way for me to introduce like outside box marketing techniques used by rock stars for corporations because marketing is marketing. It doesn't matter what the product is, it's still marketing. And you, there's, there's tricks that you can do. And now with social networking, you do, do so many more things to get out there basically for very little money. 
Well, so 80,000 people, I mean, boy, I tell you, I find it rather challenging to fill a room with 80 people. Now, 80,000, yes, they're paying a lower ticket price, some of them, but, but how, how do they do that? I mean, what were the tricks that these bands were using to attract such big crowds? So I'll use Guns N' Roses for an example. So their mission statement, let's call it, they didn't have an official mission statement, but their mission statement was to be the baddest boys of rock and roll. They said, we are going to do everything bad. We're going to be late for concerts. You know, Axel was late all the time, and we'd have marketing meetings. How the heck, all right, I'll just give you an example. We're in Denver, Colorado, and there's 80,000 people coming to a show in Denver, Colorado. The next show is in, say, Kansas City, Missouri at Arrowhead Stadium, and we only have 40,000 people coming instead of 80,000. How in two days are we going to get 40,000 people to come to this concert to fill up the stadium? And so we're not embarrassed because Guns N' Roses could never not do a sold out show. So we'd have a little meeting in the morning one day and we'd say something, it's time to throw the television outside the uh, hotel window. And so one of us would go to Axel's room. I'm not saying this really ever happened. This is just a, a, a theory. <laughs> so <Okay. laughs> one, of us, one, was, one of us might have gone to Axel's room take the television and throw it out the hotel window into the swimming pool, making sure that no one was in the pool to make sure no one got hurt, obviously. And then at the same time, we would be out there asking, uh, telling the uh, person downstairs, I, I, I would go to the hotel manager and say, here's $25,000, sir. I have no idea how this happened, but rumor has it a television fell out outside Axel's room, and I, I don't know how to fix that. So, and then at the same time, a publicist would then be... Uh, contacted at the same time saying, okay, uh, I think I saw the same television fly out the window. To make a long story short, we'd be in the newspaper the next day, and everyone would say, "Uh uh-oh, here they go again. The bad boys of rock and roll are being bad, and uh, the next show would sell out because we were in the newspaper doing something bad because the idea is to keep with the mission statement of being as bad as possible and, and catering to those needs of the audience. It was interesting. Howard Stern had this thing, uh, they did a survey on, in his movie, they said, you know, half of the people listen to Howard Stern because they love him and half listen to them because they hate him. And it's the same thing with Guns N' Roses. People came to see Guns N' Roses because they wanted to see what would happen next. So they just threw the television, they got in the paper, they're being very, very bad. Now they're coming to the concert to make sure uh, to see what they're going to do now because obviously Axel's in a tirade. So things like that. Now I do not tell businesses, obviously, to do this. You know, I do a lot of seminars in hotels, but I do tell them how to get into the newspaper, how to do things differently, stand out from the competition so you create a buzz of some sort. And, you know, um, there's legal ways of doing that as well instead of getting in the paper, because I'm not going to be there with $25,000 to bail you out of jail and stuff like that. What that all says to me, though, is it says that have a clearly defined brand and don't stray from it. Yes. Okay, so people know you for something. They know you for something specific. So these were the bad boys of rock and roll. But before that, you worked for Air Supply. I mean, come on. Talk about a contrast, okay? so what... And you know what's really funny? I'll give you an inside scoop here. Air Supply partied more than Guns N' Roses. Really? That's funny. That's funny. I know. Isn't that funny? Well, what, what, what was their thing? I mean, did they have a clearly defined brand like that? Everybody knows their music, of course, but what, I mean, what else their was thing was very clearly defined. They sang love songs, nothing but love songs, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. All their songs were lost in love, all out of love, making love out of nothing at all. All these songs about love. So they're... Everyone was saying things like, you know, you need to be more rock and roll and stuff like that and go with the times. Well, they found their niche. I mean, they attracted 95% audiences, uh, women to their audiences, and that was their niche. Their niche was 20 to 45 even year old women that just loved coming to hear love songs. And then, you know, it's really funny, the guilty pleasures of many men that I know love their supply, but they never admit it. It's really an interesting thing. It's not macho enough, right? Right, right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So what, what else did you, what, what else can people do to become a rock star of, of their various niche? I mean, do you want to take it like segment it, like speaking, authorship, trade shows, etc.? What I basically teach people, I, I personally believe the first thing people need to do to become a rock star in their industry, I truly believe this because when I did it, it just changed the whole world for me. It was to write a small book. And I say a small book because that's very important because so many people uh, get very, very overwhelmed when they say, oh my gosh, I have to write a book. Craig's telling me to write a book. But I always tell people, just write a 96-page book, just a quick little book on something. And what happens is because I've taken the overwhelm away out of writing a book, 
they tend to write instead of a 96 page book, they always write the 150 to 200 page book. So it, it's, it's a little bit thicker. But once I wrote, I wrote these four books in nine weeks. And as soon as I did that, like I wrote this book, Marketing Your Small Business on a Shoestring Budget, because before I was rock star guy, I was America's shoestring budget coach teaching people how to save a ton of money on marketing and advertising. And I wrote this book, Marketing Your Small Business on a Shoestring Budget, and two days after I wrote the book, literally two days after I got it in my hands, I put a website up, and a casting director from Los Angeles calls me and says these words, I hear you're the expert on marketing your small business on a shoestring budget. And I'm like on the phone going, Yes, I am, because I had a book. And she said she saw my book, and she realized, oh, my gosh, I need this guy on my show. So I had a screen test within one day for my own reality TV show. I was one of the three finalists. I ended up losing out to uh, Bill Rancic, the guy that won season one Apprentice. But I almost made, I almost got my own reality TV show simply because I wrote a book. And I also used the book for this reason as well. This is how to stand out. Because when I print books, I print about 2,000 books. And because I send a lot of people to this printer that I use, they get really good deals. So I can get about a dollar a book for 2,000 books. So say you print 2,000 books for a dollar a book is $2,000. If I sell 200 of those books for $10 each only, I now have my $2,000 investment back. I have 1,800 free books left over. So what I do is when I go to networking events, when I go to associations, anywhere I'm in a group of people, Instead of handing out business cards, which everyone else does, I give people my book. Then they think, oh my gosh, this guy's giving me a $15 book for free, and I want to know. Now, on the book it says, Craig Doeswalt's Rockstar System for Success, and they say, why is it called Rockstar System for Success, which is what, is what I want them to ask. And so then I say, well, I used to talk with Guns N' Roses. I was Axel Rose's personal manager, which gets a group of people around you very, very fast because they all want to hear the Guns N' Roses stories. And they say, what are you doing now? And I tell them, well, I, I teach these rock star marketing boot camps every March and September in Los Angeles. And inevitably, they go home and they sign up for the boot camp because I've given them a gift. They're interested in the subject. And now all of a sudden, I've created a fan. If I did that with a business card, it just doesn't have the same effect. So the book is the first thing you need to do. I personally believe. And then there's speaking, like you just said, and other little things that you can do on the Internet as well. But the book, for me, is the main, main part of it. And what about trade shows? I mean, that's one that a lot of speakers, I don't think, really consider. And when I say that, I'm talking about actually being in the trade show itself, the exhibit hall, not on the stage at the podium, because, of course, there are speaking sessions, but actual trade show part of it. What about rock star success there? Huge success. I actually have, if I may, I have a very good way to attract. So say you have a booth at a trade show, and I believe everyone should go to a trade show and promote whatever you're doing. I have a great way to get people to come to your tables at these trade shows. And it's one of my outside the box marketing tips. I have, I have about 50 of them now I share at my um, boot camps, and they're all very, very outside the box. But this is a great one for trade shows. So you're at a trade show, you're going to a trade show, let's just say it's in Vegas, and you have a booth set up in the uh, trade show. How do you get people to come to your booth without you know, having the fishbowl with the uh, free prize and all that stuff? And, and well, I have models that come because we, we own a modeling agency as well, so I have pretty girls or you know, good-looking guys standing out front handing out flyers, the typical stuff. But before the trade show even starts, what I do is I hire six you know, guys and girls dressed as uh, chauffeurs. They're dressed in black suits with a black tie and a white shirt. And each of them, their job for the day is when people are flying in and coming to the airport to go to the trade show, their job is to hold a sign that says Rockstar, Craig Doeswalt, www.rockstarmarketingbootcamp.com, as if they're waiting for me to get off the plane with my entourage. So I have like six of them standing next to each other as if I have six limos waiting for me and my entourage. I must be like, oh my gosh, I've got to see who this guy is. And their job all day is to go to baggage claim, to baggage claim, to baggage claim, meeting all the people that are coming off the plane for the trade show. So in their minds, they're saying, oh my gosh, I have to go visit this guy's booth because he is huge. Obviously, he's doing something very, very great. And that's how I get a ton of people to come to my booth and, and find me out because they're like, the perception is, oh my gosh, this guy's like six limos waiting. He must be hugely successful. That's just a weird Tip. Oh, that's not a weird tip at all. I mean, impressions like that are everything. So that's fantastic. Yeah, exactly. Anything you want to mention that's online? I mean, those are live things that you've mentioned so far. Right. Oh, yeah. And then, oh, yeah, we, we do a whole section on, on online stuff. You know, obviously, 
you know, it's, it's really funny. When I do these boot camps, I, and when I do guest speaking on the weekends, people, I, I say out to the audience, I pull the audience, how many of you own a small business and everyone raised their hands, or if you're an entrepreneur, everyone raises their hands, how many of you have a website? And believe it or not, to this day, still 20%, uh, maybe even 15%, I'll, I'll say, 15% of the people do not have a website still, which blows my mind. But So the first thing you need is obviously a website. You need someone, I call it, you need an online hub and an offline hub. The offline hub has come to my boot camp every March and September in Los Angeles. The online hub is my website. I have craigdoeswalt.com. I have rockstarmarketingbootcamp.com. The idea is I drive all my traffic to the website. So I have social networking. Obviously, I use Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, all those as a business tool to drive people to the website. So what I do is I talk about, because I keep with my brand, I talk about rock star stuff. For example, uh, last year, I think it was Kanye West pulled the microphone out of Taylor Swift's hand at the Grammys or something like I that. I was very upset with him over that because I'm in love with Taylor Swift. <laughs> <laughs> That's hysterical. So, so you would have liked this post that I wrote. So anyway, I, I wrote a post about that because that's my brand is Rockstar, and it was a very Rockstar thing that happened. It was a very bad thing that happened, but I tied it into some marketing principle. And what I did was I posted it on ping.fm, which went to my uh, Facebook site, went to my blog, it went to my website. It goes everywhere. And I got a ton of hits that night on everything because people were Googling Kanye West. And I'm really good with search engine optimization stuff and getting people to you know, come to see my site that uh, I had a ton of hits that day because I used something that happened in the news and tweeted or, or Facebooked about it, tying it into my brand. So I, I, I came up with some marketing technique that you could have used by not grabbing the microphone out of her hand. But I had keywords in there of Kanye West and Taylor Swift. So I do things like that all the time to drive people to the website. I use Facebook as a total uh, business tool. A lot of people say, oh, I don't want to invite people I don't know. I have like almost 5,000 friends, the max on my personal. I, I think I know 200 of them. You know, everyone's like, well, they're not your real friends. My, I have friends in New York, that's where I'm from. They say, how do you know that many people in Los Angeles? I'm like, oh, I don't know that many people. It's just, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a database is what it is. So I use that. But the biggest things I use are YouTube and I use chat rooms. Now picture this, because I toured with Guns N' Roses and Air Supply, I go into their chat rooms telling them I'm the guy that was Axel's personal manager during the height of their career. Well, of course, everyone wants to ask me questions because I, I know a lot of stuff. And I feed them just enough information to get them excited about Guns N' Roses, and inevitably what happens just like the offline marketing is, so what are you doing now? I do these September boot camps. And think of this, all these Guns N' Roses fans back then are probably all businessmen right now. Businessmen and women, they either own their own business or they work, work for corporations, so now they've become my audience. So I go into chat rooms with Air Supply and Guns N' Roses, tell them who I am, talk about them, uh, like-minded people because we have the same interests, and then uh, they ask me inevitably, what are you doing now? And the same thing with the Kansas City Chiefs. You know, because let, everyone says to me, yeah, but you have Guns N' Roses and Air Supply. Those are cool chat rooms. So you have that going for you. What about us? I don't have that background. So I'm a Kansas City Chief football fan and a huge fan. And I go into chat rooms and I commiserate when we do bad and I celebrate when we do good. And I form a bond with people online talking to them about real everyday stuff. And once again, they always say, so what do you do for a living? And I'd rather work with somebody that I know that I have a connection with than someone that I don't. And that's why those work. And then I use YouTube. YouTube is huge. Every video that I ever did with Guns N' Roses, I'm in there um, making of a strange video, that, which is one of their songs. I'm in a couple of other videos. I put those. Anything that I was with with Guns N' Roses and anything that I do now as far as speaking, I take clips, I make sizzle reels, put them on YouTube. And there's a million little tricks that you can do on YouTube to get thousands of listeners. I teach that at my boot camp. To make a long story short, it's all about keywords in the title bar. It's about keywords in the description. Most people put a YouTube description like, this is a video of me here. <laughs> and, that's it. and for one of my videos, for example, it was a, a story about Guns N' Roses. In the description, I wrote down every Guns N' Roses song because people are Googling in, Welcome to the Jungle, Paradise City. So they're in my description, those words. So if someone's Googling, Welcome to the Jungle, my video probably comes up. It actually does come up a lot now because I've done some other things to get that along. So, and, and once again, at that YouTube video, I drive them back to the website. In the chat rooms, I drive them back to the website or to my offline marketing boot camps. 
So you've got all these ancillary satellites funneling people into the website. Now, yeah, exactly. you know, uh, I, I want to ask you about collaboration in a moment. But before we get into that, if there are any of the sort of seven rock star rules that you didn't mention yet, Craig, please mention those now. You've kind of interwoven them into the talk here. I've kind of interwoven, but there are a couple of um, that I did not. One of them, and I'll go through these very, very fast because they're very basic. But, but you know what about basic is? is that no one does the fundamentals anymore. No one does the basics anymore. Everyone wants to just get rich quick. So I have seven rock star rules, and these seven things that I did immediately when I first decided I am going to be the rock star speaker, I'm not going to do these 14 jobs anymore. I'm going to do one thing, like you said before. I focus on one thing. I do it well. I do that very, very well. Everything is rock star brands. Everything is rock star marketing. And so these are the seven things I did to get this going. First was get rid of the clutter. I truly believe that if you have a cluttered office or a cluttered house or a cluttered um, mind, you will not be able to be creative and you get stuck. Uh, number two is stop procrastinating, and I don't need to say much about that. Number three is bring music into your life. Every morning, my wife and I wake up to our favorite songs because it puts us in a great mood for the day. And uh, I play a lot of music at my Rockstar Marketing Boot Camps, and when I'm done playing these songs, everyone has a smile on their face because they're just so used to being bummed out for the day. And when you hear your favorite song and when you hear it on the radio and you hear it in your house, it just puts you in a great mood. So I always tell people, bring music into your life. Next one is go and tell no man. Uh, how many of you guys have had the greatest idea in the world to only have someone like your mother, your father, your brother, your sister, your aunt, or your uncle say, oh, it's been done before. Oh, you can't do that. You don't know what you're doing or you're not good enough to do that. And then that passionate idea that you had gets knocked down little by little by little, and all of a sudden that is totally gone and you don't do it. Another one is uh, focus. Follow one course until successful. I have 80 coaching clients that I work with right now, and every single one of them says, you know, I'm good at this. I do this. I want to do this. Everyone says I should do this, and they find that they do these 10 things, and none of them very, very well. Like I just said, focus on one thing. Become that rock star speaker. Become whatever your brand is. Live it, drink it, breathe it, and then you will be successful. Um, number six I think I'm at is do something, then tell everyone how you did it. And this is basically a coaching program. One example is I wrote these four books in nine weeks, and everyone said, how the heck did you do that? So then I created a three CD set and an action guide of how to do it, what I did, the 30-day program, how to write a book in 30 days. So I got paid for writing the book, and I sell books, and I get on stages because I wrote a book. And now I'm telling everyone how I wrote the book, which is a coaching program. Everyone has something like that where they're an expert at something in their background that people want to know without having to figure it out for themselves so you can make extra money telling people what everyone what they want to know by a coaching program i always say knowledge is the new currency basically and number 7 is schedule it uh this is my favorite one because this goes back to stop procrastinating if you schedule something like a book launch or a seminar and you tell people that at this seminar i'm going to have these products available to you and you don't have the products ready and you have you know 80 to 100 people coming you will get it done your mind will not let you fail and because you have people coming to an event or something that you're launching that you've told the world about and you don't provide for them, then you're going to look very, very bad and that won't happen. So you, you schedule something, you put a deadline on it, and because of that now you're able to do the project that you probably would not have done because you usually don't tell people about it. So those are the quick rundown of the seven. We'll be back in just a minute. Did you know that we offer one-on-one -on -one coaching? This includes six months of one-on-one -on -one coaching. For more information, go to jasonhartman.com. What, what about collaboration, Craig? I mean, when you talk about that, are you referring to affiliate programs or are you referring to getting these famous rock stars like the lead singer for Aria Speedwagon at your events talking? And, and it's all of it. Uh, it's, uh, I collaborate uh, on so many levels. Now, What's happened is because I've done pretty well as this rock star marketing speaker guy, I get a lot of joint venture opportunities. <laughs> I get like five to ten a day via email or via a phone call. So that can get a little dangerous because I'm so focused right now. Like two years ago, three years ago, I would have said, yes, I'll partner with you. Yes, I'll partner with you. Yes, I'll partner with you. And then your whole business is gone and you're not doing what you're focused on doing. My main focus is to stay focused on the rock star brand. So if something comes along that in, in, it helps the rock star brand, then I'm very, very interested. But if it's just an offshoot thing because someone wants to tie into my database, 
then I really have to start weeding out. But it is collaborating with anything. Like I bring rock stars to my event because my brand is rock star marketing, so I feel I should have a rock star. But what does that do for me? It obviously gets me pictures with a rock star. It gets me in with the in crowd, and it gets me on their stages. You know, when REO Speedwagon does a show in L.A., now Kevin Cronin is going to say, do you want to come to the concert? I used to, when I was with Air Supply, I sang on stage with them, roll with the changes. Things like that would start happening again because now we're buds and we formed a relationship because I have this rock star brand and he's a rock star. So I help him and then he helps me. So I collaborate with those type of people all the time because that's my brand. This other thing that I do is, um, you know, I, I give this example at my boot camps. It's all about tapping into each other's database. That's why we do joint venturing. And the best example in rock and roll was when Bing Crosby and David Bowie did uh, Little Drummer Boy together. Two completely opposite brands, two completely opposite styles of music, but they sang this Christmas song together, did a video, and it sold millions. And I can imagine the agents or managers saying, you know, we, we should put these two together. I want to tap into your database. David needs more people, so you can tap into Bing's database. And it was a great, great collaboration between two you know, music people that had no business being together, and it was a huge success. I, I ran a theater here in town, a little Broadway-style type of theater in Los Angeles, and I used to uh, bring in Broadway-type shows, but I didn't have a lot of money at the time because we were a nonprofit, and I didn't want to sink so much money into the theater, but I wanted to put on good shows. So I said, how the heck am I going to tell 60,000 people in our community to come to our theater, this new theater? And so I partnered with the trash company, because they send out bills every month. And I asked them, can you put a little insert, and I'll give you a, 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 of our season, our 2002 season, and at the same time I'll give you sponsorship and put your name of your company in light. So if a, if a garbage company and a theater can partner together, I truly believe that if you think outside the box, who is someone that you can tap into to work with, to uh, where you both benefit. And, and that's what we teach a lot at the boot camps as well. Those are some very interesting bedfellows, no question about it. I mean, I know, right? you, you have, nobody would think that you could mix those types of entities together. And, and that's what we, we talk about a lot is start thinking differently than, than everyone else thinks. You know, um, you know, you're in the real estate world, real estate agents. Most real estate agents send out a postcard with their picture of it with a sold sign you know, uh, as a postcard. And, and that's fine because that's what everyone does. But imagine someone that does something just a little bit differently to stand out from everybody else to get more business. And that's, that's basically what I believe everyone should do. You know, a lot of, a lot of these regular business owners, I've, in the last year and a half, I've had, I think it's like 89 or 90 something people have written books, you know, back to the book thing. And these are non-authors. And every one of them that's written a book, I have a, a mortgage broker here in town. She wrote Stress-Free Mortgage. And now she's like the top mortgage broker in town just because she wrote a book and she's not doing anything different in her marketing. But now she's the expert and everyone's like, wow, you wrote a book. You must really know what you're talking about. No question about it. I mean, I've published nine books now. None of them are big and famous, but they do a lot for me in my business. And when I published my first book about 11 years ago now, I, I just couldn't believe what happened. My, my speaking career, just the fees increased. I could sell books at the back of the room. It was a tie-in for future opportunities. The book is a great business card. And I'll tell you, my next next project, it's not a book. I have a, a few more books in the pipe that are just sort of based on my shows and so forth. But my next project is actually a documentary film. Mm -hmm. And I think that will be a phenomenal type of business Dude, that's card. Huge. I'm, I'm actually doing one myself. It, it, uh, I think that's phenomenal. The radio that you do these podcasts, you know, that's a great little niche. I mean, not many people do that. And, and that's what makes you stand out because you do these other things that people, most people aren't doing. Everyone's like, how the heck am I going to do a podcast? I mean, it's so easy, but people get overwhelmed by the idea of it. How am I going to do a radio show? Oh, my gosh, you want me to do a documentary? Are you crazy? But if you think about it, that, that's exactly what you should do as, as a business person. Everybody has expertise, and now it's so easy to share. In today's world, you don't need anybody's permission to share your knowledge and your ideas with the world. You can just do it. You can go direct. You can create a documentary with a couple of video cameras that are prosumer cameras and an Apple computer with Final Cut Pro software. There you go. You're, you're so speaking my language. Incredible I love what you can do nowadays. And you just don't need to get a publisher to pick up your idea. You don't need to get a nope. network or a movie studio. You just do it. You go direct 
to the consumer. You go direct to your tribe, your audience, tribe as Seth Godin calls it. So that's what you can do. Hey, I've got a couple more questions for you. But first of all, I want you to tell your the listeners uh, about the offer you have. And these can all be found at speakingofwealth.com slash offers. Let me repeat that. It's the website for the show, speakingofwealth.com slash offers. And tell the listeners, if you would, Craig, about what you offer. And and then let me circle back with a few more questions. So uh, like I've mentioned a couple of times, every March and September in Los Angeles, I do these rockstar marketing boot camps. They're four-day boot camps. And they're basically designed to help you think outside the box, take your business to the next level. You know, the typical business stuff that everyone talks about but it's really, it's a, it's a very exciting four days. It's not, there's a bunch of speakers um, not selling, just a bunch of ins- uh, inspirational speakers. I'm on there the most of the four days. I basically teach basically for four days long. Um, you know, social networking, how to uh, affiliate marketing, anything with internet marketing. Like I said, outside the box marketing techniques, tricks that you can use on the internet to get people to see you, all that stuff. We teach for four days, but even more than that, it's not a bunch of talking heads on stage. I integrate music. I integrate games, and it's a fun four days, and you don't even realize you're learning, and by the end of the four days, you walk out of there like, what just happened? So I do that every March and September in Los Angeles, and it's 997 to come, and you get to bring a friend for free, but if you go to your website that you just mentioned, we'll put a deal on there as well. If they listen to the show, we'll, we'll tie in an upcoming boot camp uh, whenever the, uh, just go to that website to get an update of what boot camp is coming next, where it is actually in Los Angeles. And uh, I have rock stars come all the time. I always have a business rock star. I've had like Derek Hall, the president and CEO of the Arizona Diamondbacks, and he talks about winning off the field. So I always bring a business rock star. And then I always bring a rock star. I've had Kevin Cronin from Mario Speedwagon, Eddie Money. I've had Ray Parker Jr. of Ghostbusters. I've had uh, Russell Hitchcock, the lead singer of Air Supply. I've had Duff McKagan, the bass player of Guns N' Roses. So I've had a pretty eclectic group of people. So it's a fun, it's a fun four days, and we'll just make a deal on your website. It's usually nine ninety seven a person to go, but it's buy one, get one free through the website. And then we'll make another deal on the website as well. But every March and September in Los Angeles. Fantastic. So again, speakingofwealth.com slash offers, and that's offers O-F-F-E-R-S, not to be confused with authors that write books. <laughs> right, right. So it's offers. So you focus on, on the small business, the entrepreneurs, home-based business. In this economy, it's hard enough to have money to start and sustain a business. And then it's even tougher to get money to advertise and, and do that kind of stuff. You talked a little bit about driving traffic to websites. Did you have any more tips on, on the tr- lead generation, traffic generation stuff? Well, uh, you know, it's, it's all about the social networking and it's all about, uh, it's mainly, like I said before, all those, I use seven areas to drive people to the website uh, online. It's mainly, like I said, LinkedIn. Uh, LinkedIn is another one that I use. I, I become like an expert on LinkedIn. I answer questions. They always, they always have these discussion groups. I always tell people, here's another, all right, here's another one to drive traffic. If you're a local business, for example, and you uh, just have a local audience. You just, uh, you're a small business or an entrepreneur, and you just want to focus on your local area. I always tell people in the uh, title bar, for example, of your web page. Now, most people don't know what that is, but it's the title bar is that uppermost part of your website page that no one even realizes. It usually says about us in the about us page and contact us in the contact us page. If you put, like I live in Santa Clarita, California, so if I put Santa Clarita speaker, Santa Clarita Marketing Seminars, that anyone that types in Santa Clarita Marketing Seminars or any, like anything local like that, they would come to my website first because it's in the title bar. I teach people how to use your local city name um, to drive people to your website by putting that keyword, the city's name keyword, all throughout your website as well. So if people are like when I look at homes in Santa Clarita, I would type in Santa Clarita Homes in Google, and obviously I would come to anyone that had anything to do with its homes in Santa Clarita. I tell businesses to do that as well. So that's a local search company, uh, a local search uh, type of trick. There's also ways of uh, driving more traffic to your website using videos. I put videos everywhere uh, on YouTube like we talked about before. And I was going to say one more thing, and it just totally lost my mind. But it's basically using all these uh, keywords basically in your websites and in everything that you do, driving people back to your thing. Oh, I know what it was. I, if you type in marketing seminar, and you, you would agree that marketing seminar is a huge 
thing on Google. I mean, very, a very generic keyword. Very yeah. generic thing. There was, and I think I'm still on the first page. I was number one for a very long time because in my title bar, the first words in the title bar was marketing seminar, and the last word in the title bar was marketing seminar. So it's a trick that the Google fighters apparently look at this title bar in their search engine optimization, and, and most people pay like $1,500 a month or five to $1,500 a month getting a search engine optimization company to, search and to optimize your site. 90% of what they do is change that little title bar. So ask your website person to just change the title bar, and no one does it. And not even the graphic designers out there know how to do it because they, always, they put About Us for the About Us page so they remember where that page was. Because in the title bar it tells them, oh, that was the About Us page. And no one changes it. So if you're one of those people that change you, this little title bar, then you're one step ahead of everybody else. And Craig, your book is entitled Brand on the Run. It reminds me of that old song, Band on the Run. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. And, uh, and I read it that way because I thought, this is a guy that's been in the music industry, right? W why did you call it that? I mean, what does that mean, Brand on the well, Run? Well, actually, that's not the title of the book. I, the my title of the book is The Rockstar System for Success. One of the things I talk about in the book is to brand on the run. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, um, but it, it is a very big part of the book because I totally believe, you know, remember Sgt. Pepper's, the Beatles? Sure. They, when they did their concert, they dressed in that garb for every single concert that so they were branding through their clothes all the time. So when I go to speak at seminars and when I go to trade shows and when I go to all these events, I dress when, in ripped jeans and I wear a, a, a rock and roll kind of shirt that's not tucked in in a rock star kind of jacket, a very very rock star like jacket with crosses on it and stuff. So when I go to these seminars where everyone else is dressed, you know, business casual, which is what they're supposed to do, um, I totally stand out from the competition. So now everyone says, well, once again, Craig, yeah, but you are the rock star guy, so you get to dress like that, but we as business people don't. But then I give this little story. There's this guy, Glenn Morshower. He is, he played Aaron Pierce on the show 24 for seven years. Very famous character actor. I like actor. Aaron Pierce. He was a good, uh, he was uh, one in the Secret Service. That's he right. He was the Secret Service guy for the president. And he had this major storyline going on because the president did something bad and, and he stood up for his rights. Anyway, he, he's become very, very well known as that guy. You know, no one knows his name, but he speaks at my seminars all the time. His name is Glenn Morshower and he's a very good friend of mine. Well, Glenn is also a motivational speaker now. And when he did motivational speaking or would fly... Uh, to uh, do uh, movies, and he'd be on a plane dressed in sweats and a hat so he wasn't recognized and, and he could kind of go undercover. So he'd get on the plane and he'd fly home and, and everything would be fine. But he started saying to himself after he came to one of my boot camps, he's like, you know this brand on the run thing? I'm going to try this. So he literally wore the same suit. <laughs> now, this is just a summer. suit that he wore on the show. And, and let and me guess, he, and he had a little earpiece in his ear too. <laughs> <laughs> now he didn't go that far. Okay. <laughs> but that would have been really good. So he's sitting in the, um, literally the first time he did, he wore the same suit that he wore on the show, and he's sitting in the waiting room before they go onto the plane, and he sits next to this gentleman, and this gentleman says, okay, I, I just have to ask your Aaron Pierce from 24, correct? And he goes, yes, I am. And he goes, so, oh my gosh, it's a pleasure to meet you, and what are you doing here? Oh, well, I just came back from this, speaking gig. I was a speaker at this whatever he was doing. And the guy that he met was actually um, a major promoter for conferences of seminars. So he got a $10,000 speaking gig because he was dressed like Aaron Pierce, whereas if he was dressed in a sweat, he probably wouldn't have recognized him. When he was on the plane, same day, same flight, he got another speaking gig for the guy that sat next to him in the airplane. So now he goes everywhere because he's a motivational speaker and he really wants to promote his speaking through the brand of Aaron Pierce, he gets speaking gigs all the time and he meets people in airports, he meets very interesting people, and he tells everyone the first thing he leaves in with, I'm a motivational speaker, not I'm an actor, which he is, but I'm a speaker because that's what he's selling because he can't really sell the acting in an airport, but he can sell that he's a motiv motivational speaker. So I tell people, dress the part all the time. Just whatever you are, dress that part. I have a kindergarten teacher that, that, that teaches um, parents how to get their kids ready for kindergarten. That's her coaching program. And she wears a jumpsuit with the ABCs on it. You know, something simple like that. And that's all you need to do.
That's fantastic. So all the world is indeed a stage, as Shakespeare said. And, oh, uh, I love that. And, and then, we're just merely players. Yes, and and then Rush later did in their song Limelight. So it's all a about, Limelight. Yeah, I love it. You're a rock and roll guy. <laughs> you're a rock and roll guy, Jason, aren't you? Oh yeah, yeah. I love a lot of this great old music. It's good. Well, hey Craig, thank you so much for sharing your insights today. Phenomenal success you've had, and really great to hear all this stuff again. Everybody, go to speakingofwealth.com/offers to learn more. And we really appreciate having you on the show, Craig. And I'll see. Thank you so much, Jason. I look forward to seeing you soon. Take care. Bye-bye. What's great about the shows you'll find on jasonhartman.com is that if you want to learn about some cool new investor software, there's a show for that. If you want to learn why Rome fell, Hitler rose, and Enron failed, there's a show for that. If you want to know about property evaluation technology on the iPhone, there's a show for that. And if you'd like to know how to make millions with mobile homes, there's even a show for that. Yep, there's a show for just about anything. Only from JasonHartman.com. Or type in Jason Hartman in the iTunes store. Copyright the Hartman Media Company. For publication rights and interviews, please email media at JasonHartman.com. This show offers very general information. Opinions of guests are their own. Nothing contained herein should be considered personalized, personal, financial, investment, legal, or tax advice. Every investor's strategy and goals are unique. You should consult with a licensed real estate broker or agent or other licensed investment, tax, and or legal advisor before relying on any information contained herein. Information is not guaranteed. Please call 714-820-4200 and visit www.jasonhartman.com for additional disclaimers, disclosures, and questions.